China's a great place to invest. That is, if you don't like your money. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. After a decade as China's premier, Li Keqiang died a few weeks ago. For 10 years, he was the top guy overseeing China's economy. Except when Xi Jinping decided to blow it up during zero COVID. But he was pretty important nonetheless. So what was his legacy? Well, it's hard to say. He was known for championing growth and small businesses. Some analysts say he will be remembered as a frustrated reformer. But I like to remember him as the top leader who admitted China's GDP is man-made and unreliable. Of course, Li Keqiang didn't just come out and say that. If he did, he probably wouldn't have made it to 68. No, he was a victim of WikiLeaks. Li Keqiang was the party secretary of Liaoning province and a top contender for president of China in 2007 when he told U.S. Ambassador to China, Clark Rant Jr., during a private dinner that GDP figures are man-made and therefore unreliable, so he couldn't use them to help him determine economic growth for Liaoning province. Describing the dinner and WikiLeaks leaked it in 2010. In the cable, Li described his own private method of determining economic growth, which he said was much more accurate than using the man-made GDP. He said all other figures, especially GDP statistics, are for reference only. Yes, in China, GDP doesn't stand for gross domestic product, it stands for gross domestic propaganda. This has become common enough knowledge that other entities have their own ways of measuring China's economic well-being. The Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco's go-to is its China Cyclical Activity Tracker, also known as its China Cat Index. The index uses eight indicators to create a picture of what's happening in China's economy, represented by a green line on this graph, which can vary wildly from China's official GDP, which is the blue line. Who has the better data? The Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco or China's government? Who knows, but that's the problem. It's possible neither line is really accurate, but Western media outlets treat China's official GDP like fact when it is not. For example, just recently, the Associated Press reported that China's economy grew 4.9% in the third quarter. CNBC reported that China's third quarter growth exceeded the forecast. CNN reported that China's economy is regaining momentum. And The Guardian reported that China's economy is growing faster than expected. All of these reports are based on China's man-made GDP. But none of the news outlets say that. They just say, here's how it is. As you can imagine, this has huge implications for overseas investors, as well as foreign businesses thinking about entering the China market. How can you make wise decisions without accurate data? But China's GDP data is just one of the problems with what I call China's made-up data problem. I'll tell you more after the break, and don't spend money without watching. Welcome back. China's made-up data problem doesn't just affect GDP number. Take China's population data. Like Li Keqiang said about China's GDP, it's for reference only. The author of the book Big Country with an Empty Nest estimates that China's population began declining in 2018, but China's National Bureau of Labor Statistics said that the population only started declining last year. Yi told Reuters that local governments overstate their population to obtain more subsidies, including education fees they collect from the central government. He said even though everyone knows that China's official demographic figures are systematically overestimated, the authorities have consistently cracked down on anyone who questions the data. Yeah, nothing says China's confident in its data like going after anyone who says otherwise. It's the same with employment statistics as well. Officially, China's youth unemployment rate reached over 21% in June. But that only counts the urban population, which according to official statistics, is only about 60% of China's population. Independent estimates say that the real youth unemployment figure could be as high as 46%. China didn't like all the scrutiny over its unemployment rate because, as you can imagine, it didn't make the economy look so great. So guess what it did? It just stopped reporting the data altogether. This is part of a growing trend of data censorship in China. After all, you can't accuse the government of fudging the data if it doesn't give it to you in the first place, right? After the Chinese Communist Party passed two new data security laws at the end of 2021, overseas access to research and government data became severely limited. 
The government also cracked down on companies that provide information to overseas investors, like due diligence companies. And even obscure things are disappearing from the internet, like verdicts from China's courts and biographies of Chinese officials. The one on the left is Premier Li Qiang's biography from 2017, and the one on the right is from March of this year. See the difference? That's right, the QR code is bigger. Now, a lot of this has to do with Xi Jinping's obsession with security. He's shown over and over again that when it comes down to a choice between the economy or national security, he'll pick national security any day of the week. You see, for decades, foreign investment has been free money for Chinese companies. Foreigners poured money into China without really knowing what they were investing in. And let's just say things didn't end well for them. When a Chinese firm is revealed to be involved in fraudulent activity, as happens all the time, U.S. investors have zero recourse in China. The result? Chinese companies are bilking U.S. investors, and U.S. markets are carrying huge and incalculable added risk. And they could do that because China wasn't being transparent about its data. It refused foreign audits of its companies, claiming it would be a threat to, you guessed it, national security. In 2020, the U.S. finally put its foot down. After decades of Chinese companies bypassing rules that all other companies had to follow to list on U.S. stock exchanges, it passed a bill that would delist any Chinese company if they didn't open their books to U.S. auditors. Several state-owned companies delisted shortly after, but over 250 complied. However, that doesn't mean things are all hunky-dory now. Earlier this year, Reuters reported that Beijing was pushing Chinese companies to tone down the risks they face in disclosures for initial public offerings, IPOs. Three sources told Reuters that the China Securities Regulatory Commission met with local lawyers and asked them to refrain from including negative descriptions of China's policies or its business and legal environment in companies listing prospectuses. Remind me again why the U.S. does business with a country that lies, cheats, and steals? Oh yeah, and commits genocide? China is also reportedly telling economists not to talk about deflation or faltering growth. Multiple local brokerage analysts and researchers at leading universities, as well as state-run think tanks, said they had been instructed by regulators, their employers, and even domestic media outlets to avoid speaking negatively about topics ranging from fears of capital flight to softening prices. Yeah, nothing says China's economy is doing great, like pressuring people to say China's economy is doing great. China's attempt to manipulate its public image has tainted international organizations as well. A few years ago, the World Bank suspended its Ease of Doing Business Index. That came after a report concluded that China's position on the index was artificially boosted, partly due to pressure from Beijing. Yes, China's such a great place to do business that it just needed to do a little convincing to make the World Bank see that. But this is how China's trying to have its cake and eat it, too. It knows it has spooked foreign investors in all kinds of ways. But instead of doing things that would actually boost foreign investors' confidence in the economy, China just tries to cover it up. And whether they do it through fudging data or censoring data, it's foreign investors who get a raw deal in the end. So one thing is absolutely unmistakably clear. Doing business with China is a bad idea. Now, I've got a video I think you'd like to see about China's black children. They're children who are technically illegal in China, which means they don't officially exist. It's really interesting, so check it out. And hit that orange button there to support China Uncensored on Patreon. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.